<sighs> you see, the difference between this video and my Star Trek Into Darkness bootleg review is that I'm about to tell you the truth this time. So that's why I'm allowing myself to smile. Now, this video is not going to be talking about this Spider-Man, nor is it going to be talking about this Spider-Man. No, it's going to be talking about this Spider-Man. The Amazing Spider-Man is a comic book that I have a lot of personal experience with. It, uh, it's been around since the early 1960s, 1963 to be exact. <clears throat> that was the era of comic bookdom known as the Silver Age of Comics. And at Marvel, that was the place where Stan Lee and his group of talented artists were creating these new characters and fun stories and um, that have grown to become the uh, the icons that we know today that are, you know, uh, you look at the Avengers and all those movies that are coming out right now and all those were uh, conceived back in the day and there's been comic books of those characters since. The Marvel Universe started, you know, very small as anything starts. It gets bigger, you know, like the Big Bang. Um, so Marvel used to be this kind of sweet, compact little universe and now it's this huge ordeal and it's just kind of a spasm all over the place comic books are. But anyway, Spider-Man is sort of the the mascot of the Marvel. The Amazing Spider-Man was the flagship title for Marvel. And uh, I think it always was. I think Spider-Man was sort of the big, you know, what really made Marvel special. If you didn't have Marvel without Spider-Man, I think DC would cream it with Batman. Marvel has a lot of great characters besides Spider-Man, but The Amazing Spider-Man is done. It's over. Gee whiz, you know, this title, The Amazing Spider-Man, it's been going on for so, so many years and it's just been so convoluted and so many things have gone on. And uh, comic books are operatic format, they're serialized, so it's very much so, uh, it's not a complete story by any means, it's literally picking up a comic book which represents the day of this guy's life, Peter Parker, the main character of the, of the series, which I'm sure you, you knew that. So you pick up a Spidey book and you read about him encou <coughs> encountering villains that he has to face, Oftentimes, the same villains that he's fought before and has to fight again. Relationships in his life with other people. He switch ba switches back from different locations and different um, things that have been established before. So comic books are extremely, uh, an extremely serialized format. But here's my opinion on modern comic books, and that's okay. After after the 1960s. Actually in the late 60s, like 1968, 1969, definitely 1969, comic books were taking more of a dark turn and things were just getting a little bit more... just had more grit to them, more on the edge type stuff, you know. Stanley cooked up a story, I think the government asked him to do it, asked him to do it, not asked him, to, never mind. I received a letter from Washington, D.C., from the Office of Health, Education, and Welfare, and they said because of the big problem with drugs in the country, they would appreciate it if I could do some sort of story in, in the Spider-Man book to mention to the readers the dangers of drug addiction. It was a story about uh, Harry Osborn was going through some drug problems, I think, and uh, the comic book censorship, whatever it is, um, <laughs> they didn't like that, that there was drugs in it, even though that it was a good thing that um, Stanley was saying that drugs are bad, but anyway. So I figured the hell with it, and I printed the books anyway. Comic books were just getting more gritty. The, the age of the anti-hero, the anti-hero, was well on its way. And as the decades went by, it just got, there was a lot more violence in comic books, and just a lot more kind of gross, gross things in comic books. And that's why, yeah, there were some great comic books in the 70s and 80s, but they did have more, comic books lost that campiness about them. The early Marvel comic books, 
are extremely campy and fun. Although I'd say that Spider-Man is probably uh, Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man, definitely the best of all of them. Because even though things like uh, the Fantastic Four issues and the Avengers issues, which I have them um, in the Marvel Masterworks uh, publications, but all those are great. But you pick up a Spider-Man and you're getting something a little bit more, more content, more... The Amazing Spider-Man's not just, uh, we're a bunch of superheroes and latex and we're going to go punch the bad guy. It was more about the character of Peter Parker, and that's what made it so interesting, is uh, the contrast between this guy who has superpowers, who fights extremely powerful people, to this everyday guy. Like me. I'm not an everyday guy, though. But as the world of Marvel comic books grew and grew and grew, you had uh, something which I don't particularly like which is spin-off series. And so instead of buying one Spider-Man comic book in a month, you're buying two or three or four. Well, probably not four, unless there was a crossover. But you know, there's there was like, I think, three Spidey titles. I don't like the fact that there was two other titles going on at the same time as ASM because it took away from the flagship title. I like everything to be just... That's the thing that I really like about early Marvel comic books and that's why I won't touch a comic that come that came after the 1960s because everything was like a nice compact snowball. It was just all there and it was visible. Whereas now it's... Spider-Man 64 where he fights Doc Ock and the Ogre, but then in this one he does something else with the big interlap and oh my goodness, what's happening? So case in point, I don't like modern comic books because they're not as fun to read. They're, they're kind of gross, um, just a waste of time. And everything's just kind of scattered all over the place. And if you look at the amount of words on a page back in the uh, 60s compared to an issue of a comic book today, well, how about I show you? Here is uh, Marvel Masterworks Volume 5 for the for ASM. I'll just flip open a page. Okay, here's a scene. Look at all that dialogue. That's tons. It just goes on like that. There's actually things that are happening. Here's the deal. There's a glorification of the old days instead of, look, we're doing new things. And when they do, do, when they do, do new things, it's doo-doo. The new ones, and I have read some of the new ones, don't seem to be carrying on a legacy. They just seem to be bloating it. Thank you, I finally said something short and sweet. I remember reading One More Day, Joe Quesada, uh, editor chief, the big fat, the regular writer of the series, and the editor in chief of Marvel wrote this incredibly sadistic, awful thing. Aunt May had gotten shot violently in the stomach or something. And something where Peter Parker's at the hospital trying to save her. And then Mephisto, who... No, not Mephisto. Not Mephisto, I'm so sorry. The uh, Doctor Str Sorry, I'm thinking of Silver Sur Not Mephisto, uh, Doctor Strange, love. No, not... Uh, Meph no, not, no, not Mephisto, Doctor Strange. Wait, yes, Mephisto. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wait, no, they were both in it. That's what it was. So the whole thing was Peter Parker makes a deal with the devil, and somehow time is reversed. It's not very grounded in that sense. Um, that's the thing with Spider-Man, is he was always sort of grounded. I mean, sure, he fought space aliens occasionally and went to a planet for some special series. So there are definitely a lot of sci-fi extraterrestrial elements in Spider-Man the whole series, but it always stayed grounded. Now, time has been completely rearranged so that Spider-Man isn't married anymore. Isn't married to Mary Jane. So once again, just, this is what ASM has done. It's gone like this. This is the progression, and then they go, oh, let's stop it there, and go Bleh. And instead of Spider-Man going like this, and then, all right, time to end it, they just go, Bleh.